Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, DPR here. And uh, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And uh, there's a couple things. Well, there's a lot of things to unpack on this. You know, we throw a lot of sayings around and we never really take time to take a deep meaning into what that saying is really talking about. You know, what are the elements of that saying that apply to our job. And quite honestly, I've heard people say, you know, oh, I hear that saying all the time. I hate hearing it. Well, I read another quote today that really applies, or I think applies, where it says where time is the enemy, speed is our weapon. So Let's talk about slow is smooth and, and smooth is fast. So that saying comes from the military. Uh, you hear it a lot, especially in special operating forces. And what it says is to build skill. What they're really talking about is you have to use a progressive approach to training. Okay, Slow is smooth. It takes a long time to take people to the smooth point. And once you get to that point, then you can work on speed. So the saying is all about the progressive nature of training people to do a skill. So if we're going to be effective in training people to do a skill, what slow is smooth and smooth is fast is saying to us is number one, we've got to invest in time. Okay. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not even going to happen during the course of recruit school with very rare exceptions because most places aren't spending enough time in the recruit academy process to get to, to that skill development point. You now we got a whole bunch of stuff crammed into recruit school. I know I know of a large fire department. They've got a seven month recruit school, but in the seven months they do EMT, they do firefighter one, they do firefighter two, they do technical rescue, they do all these things crammed in to what ends up being if we talk about true skill development and competency a very short amount of time. The other thing that the saying is talking about is we've got to take tasks and we've got to break them down into component pieces. Step A, step B, step C, et cetera, et cetera. Because if we just take a task and say, okay, here's the task, here's how you do it, now you got to get real fast at it. Okay? People are going to get lost in that. You know, I go back to the days when I was working overseas and we spent a lot of time on the range. We spent a lot of time on weapons manipulations to get really good. And we would spend hours, hours of time just acquiring the pistol from the stance to our hand on the pistol over and over and over and again. And that's just one small component piece of going from this position to drawing the weapon and coming on target. So if we're going to develop competency in a skill, we've got to invest the time in it, and then we've got to break it down into component pieces. And we allow people the time to develop each one of those component pieces to the point where they can do it very smoothly. Then we can merge this into a process, and then we can start to go back and look at the individual components and figure out where we can become more effective and efficient in our movements. And once we do that, we end up becoming fast. But we don't become fast just because we do it a whole bunch of times trying to get fast. We need to invest the time. We need to break this into component pieces so we can focus on the different parts. Now, if you look at special forces, any of the special forces, Army uh, special forces, the Rangers, the SEALs, Air Force special warfare folks, 
couple things you notice in their training pipeline. Elimination is always a possibility in these pipelines up until the day before graduation. People have been dropped. But at some point in that training pipeline, the training really evolves from a selection process to a point where we're focusing on training and mentoring. So are we doing that in recruit schools? Are we getting to the point where we structure the program to identify who and who is not a good fit early into the program so that we can then move to the training and the mentoring phase so that we can start introducing these skills in component pieces and we can start working with the new people on how to develop the skills. So that's a very, very important point. At some point in time, our training needs to progress from selection to training and mentoring. And the other thing that you'll notice, if you look at special forces, special operations forces training pipelines, is there's a whole bunch of instructors floating around. I went to the fire academy. We had 30 people in our class. We had two instructors. Okay, so the instructor to student ratio is 15 to 1. You cannot take new people, put them into a situation where they've got to learn manipulative skills in a high threat, high stress environment with a 15 to 1 instructor ratio. So I'm talking to fire chiefs right now. You got to invest in time and you got to invest in people. If you just take one or two people, out there to training and expect them to be able to do everything, it's not going to happen. You got to put the right people out there too that understand the things that I'm getting ready to talk about. So fire chiefs, like I said, training cannot be a burden in your organization. It's like, uh, we got the academy going on. They need help. Uh, just call the battalion chief, send an engine company down there. Well, I'm the battalion chief, and I'm going to send Engine 14 because they're real close to the training academy. Well, Engine 14 really doesn't have all that great an officer, and they've got the old cranky guys who aren't really into this. If I'm really going to understand what it takes to build competency with my personnel, if I'm going to detail people out there that can take that mentoring approach and spend time working with people in these small component pieces of an overall process, I got to send the right people out there. So that means instead of sending engine 14 out there because it's real easy and I get the least amount of pushback, I'm going to move people around. I'm going to send 14s to the other side of the city and I'm going to send engine five out there because I know engine five has got a rock solid officer and they got a couple of firefighters on that company that are in the training that don't see training as a burden. It's going to spend some time working with people to move through the slow is smooth, smooth is fast progression. And I'm not really going to care that the guys at 14s are going to complain about having to move, relocate to the other side of the city. So I got to spend the right people. I got to invest the time. I got to put the right people into place. I got to spend the resources. I got to allot the time to make slow is smooth, smooth is fast, a worthwhile endeavor. The other thing that we have to think about that we don't really do all that well is we got to explain this to the students before we start in the training process. If I just take students out there and say, okay, this is the way we're going to dull in the air pack, and we do it for an hour to build up those, you know, mental, those neural pathways, if I don't know any better, I'm at some point going to say, hey, man, I knew how to do this a half an hour ago. And we're just doing this over and over and over again. And you're using this as a tool to mess with me. As a student, I look at this thing as a big suck fest. So when we get into training our personnel, especially on the entry level, we need to start talking to them about Erickson's 10,000 hour rule that it takes 10,000 hours of guided 
self-directed practice to become an expert in a task. And does everybody need to be an expert? Well, if you're putting on an SCBA to go into an you know immediately dangerous to life and health environment, you better be an expert with that piece of equipment. So the students need to be taught this before we go into the drills so that they understand we've got to break things down into component pieces and we got to be slow and we got to develop this skill to a point of competency and then we start building or speed. Okay, we got to talk about myelin production, like Coyle talks about in the talent code, and it takes repetition after repetition after repetition to build out the myelin production in your neural pathways to make tasks become instinctive and reflexive. But if I take thirty people, forty people, five people, a hundred people in a rec recruit academy class, wherever you are. And I sit down and I ask him on day one, hey, do you understand Erickson and the 10,000 hour rule? Do you understand about myelin production and how repetitions build myelin to make task instinctive and reflexive? Most people in that class are going to look at me like I'm speaking a foreign language. Well, if we don't want people to look at things as being a big suck fest, then they're going to understand the reasoning behind what we do. So I'll give you a couple takeaways real quick, things to think about as you manage your training. As we talk about, <coughs> excuse me, as we talk about slow is smooth and smooth is fast, why is it so important? Here's the understanding. First off, is tasks need to be viewed as a series of steps. Getting my SCBA on is a series of steps. Deploying a hand line is a series of steps. Throwing a ladder and accessing a roof is a series of steps. Searching for a victim is a series of steps. So we view these tasks as a series of steps. And then we can concentrate on the component parts on these different steps to get them smooth so that they're instinctive, so that they're reflexive. And at that point, then we can increase our speed because if time is our enemy, Speed is our weapon, okay? We have to perfect the steps. Time must be dedicated to deliberate practice. And what deliberate practice is, is what I talked about in the Special Operations Forces, where the number of instructors is high. We've got people, no matter, it doesn't matter if you're on the job for two months two years or 20 years, we all need to be subject to deliberate and guided practice where we're working on these skills and we have people watching us, guiding us, coaching us, making sure that we don't develop bad habits, making sure that we don't put the, the essential elements of the process in jeopardy just for the sake of building speed. So slow is smooth, but we can't sacrifice smooth to gain speed. So that's very, very important. Everybody needs to understand the, the human mind and how it works and how we build proficiency. Okay? Firehouses need to support the 10,000 hour concept of developing expertise because when somebody comes from the fire academy, they've not spent 10,000 hours on any one of their skills. And I'm not saying 10,000 hours is a hard, fast number. Every skill requires that depending on the complexity of the skill, depending on all these other factors, it may take less than 10,000 hours. But the, the message is the firehouses have to support this ongoing training, deliberate practice, component pieces of a process so that those lessons aren't lost when people leave the, the academy. And the people who are responsible for training need to be well-educated. Now, I referenced two books, okay? Going Pro, and I'm going to put these up on the Facebook page. First one's Going Pro. The next one's the talent code. 
if you're responsible for training, okay, and I think all officers are responsible for training, then you got to be educated. You know, these books are dog-eared and marked and highlighted and everything else. You can't be a subject matter expert, and that's what we need to have in the firehouses, training our new people without having the knowledge that goes with it. So invest in yourself. Okay? That's my rundown. Uh, that's my you know, thoughts on slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Definitely a concept that applies to us in a high-risk, high-threat environment. I hope there's some good takeaways in this video. Uh, leave some feedback. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is also going to be up on my YouTube channel, and I will put some Amazon links on my Facebook page to the two books in case you're interested. Uh, go ahead and invest in yourself. Start building your library. Start reading. Start making yourself the subject matter expert because no one else is going to do it for you. So with that being said, thank you for your time, and remember... Your comfort zones where excellence goes to die. Have a good day.